So the new HD render pipeline system has a lot of different features for lighting than what used to exist. So we have all the same lights that you might expect, but they actually function differently. Um, one thing that's interesting to note is while area lights used to be a baked only feature, area lights now exist as an actual real time light that you can use and manipulate uh, freely. Um, and it's based on the actual uh, size settings that you're using in that area light. And you actually have the ability to pick um, elements like the range so you can adjust how far that's going to transition. Um, and and it, the, the area lights are actually pretty accurate in real time, which is actually quite neat. So like as they get you know closer to a surface, you can see the um, you can see the fall off gets more pronounced and the overall intensity of the light actually uh, you know gets brighter in a fairly realistic way. Um, so if I were to like rotate this light, so like imagine we had like a TV sitting on the floor or something like that. Um, the shape of that light is pretty consistent and it actually is a real time light now. It's like that, I'm, I'm sure there's some people who are very excited to see things like that um, in Unity. Um, but then you'll also notice in addition to the, uh, you know, the prior spotlight and point light, that you actually have the ability to create a new uh, type of light, which is not listed in the game object create dialog. But if you go to, uh, say create a point light um, you can then also switch it from the type point light to a line light um, and I'm going to adjust the the range a little bit so that's not quite as extreme um, and then I'm going to adjust the intensity here now you'll notice intensity is now actually in either lumens or luminance um, that's something that uh, you might not be familiar with if you haven't done lighting in real life but uh, real life lighting is uh, measured in a number of different options. So for example, there's Lumen or Lux. Um, if you go ahead and you create a uh, directional light, directional light can be measured in Lux. And so these values, um, you might wonder why you would care what the unit of measurement is, but basically it's so that you can match things that exist in the real world. So you can create lighting conditions that are exactly the same as real world light objects or exactly the same as the amount of intensity of the sunlight um, in a specific part of the world. Um, and so you can actually make deterministic um, interpretations of how your scene will look based on the settings you have in, in the lighting. Um, another feature for that that's really great is you can actually start using color temperature, which is actually um, measured, I think it's degrees Kelvin, but basically you can decide whether your light is more of a blue, a white, or an orange hue. And you can actually match, uh, you can look this up online and you can find out, for example, what the color temperature is of a, um, say a candle, and you can get the light to look pretty accurately, um, or with like a, some incandescent bulbs or some uh, LEDs. Like mostly you can uh, simulate those types of lighting colors just by using color temperature, which is really great. Um, and then you can also, because they have a filter setting, um, you don't even have to choose between using color temperature and color because you can actually use the color as a filter, which is essentially equivalent to having a light with like a colored um, cover to it or even having just like light being viewed through um, a gel, which is something that you would do if you're doing like film or theater lighting. Um, so that's pretty accurate. But so anyway, uh, back to the line light thing. So what's cool about line lights is that line lights actually have um, a length. So when you create your light, rather than having just a, uh, a single point, you can actually make that line emit across the entire length of um, a specific surface area. That's very common for when you're looking at um, fluorescent lights, especially on walls. Um, those are pretty common um, if you're looking at, you know, there's a lot of kitchens that have that kind of stuff. Um, most offices, most stores have a good variety of, um, of these types of, of lights. Um, and they, they actually render pretty accurately, again, also in real time. Now you can bake these as well, but this is kind of a nice feature because it's, it's actually, um, it's a surprisingly realistic effect that you get from these. Um, and then, of course, because we care about having realistic materials as well, um, if I go ahead and I create 
a new material. I just call this like a reflective material. Um, I can go ahead and drop this material onto the floor here. Um, and then I can change the, um, the smoothness, for example. And we can see how uh, each of these lights produces a relatively accurate impression of the reflection of the light. Um, so you can see as I adjust the amount of smoothness that gets softened. Um, and you can see the same thing here with our area light. So you can get some pretty, uh, pretty neat looking reflections just from like the new lighting setups that we have available uh, in the Unity HD pipeline. Um, so let's, uh, let's quickly take a look because there's a couple of uh, additional details to think about when we're looking at lights in uh, Unity 2018 with the HD render pipeline. So um, we have a set, a set of features here. So it says enable shadows and then show additional settings. Um, these uh, actually just produce things that allow us to have more direct control over how these lights affect. So if I say I turn off the additional settings, you can see everything is carefully grouped um, into the additional settings. And generally, these are not settings you're going to want to make a lot of revisions to unless you kind of know why you're doing it. Um, so like, for example, I can have this light here and I can turn off the effect diffuse. And then the only thing this light does is it creates a highlight. Now, this is something that I, I think used to be a little bit more common um, just to create additional you know, lighting features, whereas now we have a lot of cube maps that we can do that with. But um, sometimes it's actually a good idea to include a reflection from a lighting that's not or a light that's not actually rendering. But then you also might sometimes want to do the reverse. You might want to actually have it not affect the specular, but you do want it to produce some general lighting. Um, and that might be uh, a setting that could help as well. Um, now, there's another setting which is useful, which is the fade distance. Um, now, it has a very far fade distance of like 10,000 here, right? But so like if, uh, if I have it set to 10, you'll notice that then as that light gets further away, it fades out. Um, and this allows you to have a little bit more control over a variety of elements uh, related to your lighting. So for example, um, let's say you had lights that um, would start showing through walls or showing shadows or something like that. If your shadow distance is, say, uh, 10, <laughs> 10 meters away, right? So if you made it that your shadow fall off also corresponds with a fade distance that causes the light to fade out when it's that far away, then you won't have something where you suddenly see these bright lights shining through walls or anything like that. Um, now, there's other settings here, like so there's like a volumetric dimmer, but there's also a regular dimmer. Um, I think that these are pretty useful because um, it used to be when we would, you know, turn lights on and off, we have to basically store the intensity or you'd have to do something with like the color value. So you could like set your color to, zero or you could um, set your intensity to zero or something like that. And that's that's fine, but it's also a little bit annoying because you often have to do things like storing values. Um, with the dimmer setting, you actually don't have to do that. You can just say whatever the settings are for my light, whether it's like, you know, color temperature here, intensity of this, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, I can just dim it out and then dim it back on. And obviously these are accessible in code, so you don't have to worry about um, just, you know, setting it manually. But I think probably most of the reason you would use the dimmer setting is in code. So you can like lerp the value from zero to one um, as a way to just more easily change the settings of your light. Um, even if you just had a light switch and you just go from off to on, um, it still gives you the ability uh, to store your settings for your actual color of your light and not have to mess with those just to create like an on off effect. Um, now there's also this uh, setting here for apply range attenuation um, and that's a you're gonna see a, a kind of a subtle result with that um, but in general it's uh, changing the way that um, your light is going to transition at a further distance so um, there's a they, they're saying that um, basically if you read the little tooltip it says this is useful indoor like a room to avoid having to set up a large range for light to get correct inverse square attenuation um and so generally uh, i would probably leave that on but you do have some settings to control that um now the other th uh, options here you have shadows and some of the shadow settings are not included until you show additional settings 
Um, so you have your base shadow resolution. So if I go ahead and create 3D, you know, sphere here, um, maybe like a cube as well, so I can have these here to take a look at. Um, then you'll notice that um, there's a bunch of settings that you can enable for this. So for example, um, adjusting view bias scale, that's uh, that's a fairly common one that just adjusts uh, how the shadows impact the surfaces. So if you have a very low bias scale, you'll notice you get this kind of banding effect. Um, I'm not gonna focus too much on those kind of things because I think you guys probably understand how that works. Um, but you can, you can individually affect the resolution of each light. So you can actually alter the performance characteristics of a light based on how much resolution you actually need it to have. Um, so you obviously you can do this in such a way that it creates bizarre effects if it's like really, really low resolution. Um, but then you can also make it much higher resolution if that's something that you know you need in a specific context. Just please be mindful of that because you can definitely make your computer kind of crap out if you're not careful. Um, so you can enable contact shadows per light. Um, now, contact shadows are also something that you have to allow in the, um, the volume settings to make sure that they're actually enabled because uh, contact shadows basically just increase the resolution of shadows of objects, uh, basically self-shadowing. Um, but you can affect that in your additional settings here. Um, now, again, there's also the option for dimmer for your shadows, and you actually control the dimmer of your shadows differently. Um, all the, there's all the kind of stuff with view bias, all that kind of stuff. Um, so you can adjust things like edge leak cleanup, and that's something that um, really will be contextual to what you're trying to do. But basically, sometimes you will see your light creeping through objects, and it'll be producing an inaccurate effect. And so you can mess with the uh, the light leaking and all that kind of stuff. Um, now, you don't have any control over the HD additional lighting data or the additional shadow data. Those are scripts that your light has to have on them. Um, but in general, those will be um, part of the process in the HD render pipeline. And I don't think they're gonna drastically change that, but um, it's always possible that those could end up rolling into the light component. It's just for right now, they're definitely not. Um, so other than that, there's, I mean, this is kind of a, an additional like introduction for how the HD render pipeline works. So just before we wrap up here, I wanna talk a little bit about how we do our uh, post processes in case you're not familiar with that.